haven't, I haven't done this in a long, long time. I haven't spoken to the uh, Chief Commissioner of Victoria Police in way too many years. Uh, he was the former police chief from 1987 through to about 1992. His name is Kel Glare, and he's our special guest on The Informer. Uh, Kel, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And I notice these days you have another role. You're part of the CAA, or the Chair of Community Advocacy Alliance, which is basically a community law and order collective made up of former police uh, chiefs and others and members of the legal fraternity. Now, the CAA was actually formed because we were dissatisfied with uh, the way the Victoria Police were operating and dissatisfied with the criminal justice system. And we were unhappy about the way people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder in the emergency service were being treated. We had hoped to advocate on behalf of all those issues and uh, we're not about politics per se, but we're also uh, keen advocates to see that we're governed by open, honest, ethical and accountable and competent government. And we are certainly not seeing that in Victoria at the moment. It must be extraordinarily disappointing for you when you've gone through so much, seen so much, and uh, what you're trying to do is make it a, a better space and a better world for your, the men and women in blue and all those who try and do the best possible job for their community. It's very easy to sit back and do nothing, but um, we'd reached a point with a number of uh, former colleagues and some leading business people and leading citizens where we could no longer just sit back uh, idle because things are at a pretty grim state in relation to uh, the, the issues that I've mentioned. And uh, we all felt that we should and could make some contribution. Can I ask you, uh, there's been an awful lot of uh, commentary over the last 24 hours, 48 hours, about the uh, uh, arrival or the possibility of a bill called the Omnibus Bill being introduced in Victoria. What, are, what have you made of some of the commentary? Well, uh, I think the commentary is to a large degree been spot on because there's been an enormous amount of resistance to the powers that, that uh, gives uh, the government, the Premier and uh, the Attorney General. Uh, and uh, there are a whole number of flaws in my view with the bill, uh, not the least of which it purports to override the Victorian Constitution. And it uh, totally uh, abrogates the statement of uh, rights and responsibilities um, um, issue. So you know, that, that simply can't be allowed, uh, allowed to happen. Uh, human rights are very important. Absolutely. Uh, Kel Glair, why would the Premier then, knowing what you've just said, be introducing or wanting to introduce a bill like this? Well, megalomaniac comes to mind, but uh, <laughs> putting that aside, the fact of the matter is it seems to be a grab for enormous powers that are not required. I mean, Victoria is down. I think today we had 11 cases of coronavirus. We've got a population of well over 6 million people. One could hardly say that we're in the grip of a pandemic at the moment. And uh, these draconian measures are simply unnecessary. We have the whole of rural Victoria locked down with apart from a recent case at Kilmore. There haven't been a case of coronavirus for months. And uh, we see this incredible grab for power. So what's the, what is his motivation? I mean, uh, he, 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 you can still see there is a poll almost every other day telling us that there, he has enormous support amongst the community. So what's the motivation to go down this pathway? I just think that uh, the Premier and his cohorts created this fiasco, this mess, this absolute disgraceful situation. And now they're struggling to portray themselves as the heroes of the recovery. Now, of course, we'd never been, in, never would have been in this situation at all if it had not been for the inept management initially. So I just believe it's an attempt to uh, really hide the fact that they're responsible for this uh, position that we're in. And uh, now they want powers, the government want the power to uh, do the best they can to blame everyone else, including mostly the citizens of Victoria for the situation, rather than taking responsibility for their own mismanagement. Now this omnibus bill that they were talking about and they're very keen to pass, uh, they have seemed to have retracted on some of the things they wanted to do. They wanted to 
introduce authorised officers to step in and uh, uh, identify people who they suspected of COVID. Who would be training these people and what would we, what would we make of this as another layer of, uh, of, the, of the legal uh, system? I was amused to see that uh, one of my colleagues in his 70s got an invitation to be, become an authorised officer. He at least has uh, an extensive police background and police training, but the provision would have allowed anyone just simply to walk in off the street and be recruited, given minimal training, and then let loose. Uh, and as the provisions then still and still do until we see the changes to the bill, uh, those persons recruited as authorised officers could uh, detain someone for what they might be thinking about doing rather than anything they'd actually done. So the whole idea was misconceived. I suspect uh, it was a negotiating tactic uh, to put something in as draconian as that, so that there could be a step back and to get the rest of the bill passed. But it really needs to be thrown out. They really need to start again. And so far as a six months extension is concerned, if there's to be an extension at all, it should surely be on a monthly basis and surely should be oversighted by um, a coalition of uh, all uh, sides of politics to make sure that the powers are not abused. Uh, if, you would, if you wanted more uh, boots on the ground, I would have thought, it would be simply a matter of training and uh, acquiring uh, more uh, members to the police force, men and women. Well, the police, sorry, the Police Act of 2013 allows the Chief Commissioner to appoint special constables. So anyone recruited ought to be under the auspices of the Chief Commissioner in the direction and control, and the Chief Commissioner should be accountable and, uh, for, for the training and the actions of those people. Now, the provision's already there. So when we have people who can be recruited under the umbrella of the Victoria Police, that is the avenue that should be adopted if one is needed at all. Um, I've, I've been saying it for the last couple of months, the police force, the men and women who make up our Victoria Police um, have been asked to do way more than they were ever trained to do and they've been put in harm's way by being asked to do so much more during this very difficult time of disruption. Um, what more could we do to help them cope with the challenges uh, at the moment? Well, I think they've been doing uh a magnificent job on the ground, I have no doubt about that. Uh, they are not trained in infection control, that's not their sphere of, of normal operation, but I think they've been enormously effective there and of course what the general population can do is make sure they cooperate with the requirements. I might not like them and I don't like some of them uh, myself, but uh, cooperating with the police. The police have been pilloried, uh, I think, for carrying out their duties, but they really have no option but to enforce the rules that now currently apply. So they're between a rock and a hard place. I can imagine. Is there another alternative that we can offer at the moment to help uh, our, our men and women in blue through this difficult time? No, I think we're locked into uh, the sort of regime that's been going on because of the mismanagement at the beginning. Uh, so I don't think there's too much more that can be done in relation to helping out the Victoria Police. I think, the, as I said, the men and women on the ground, I think, I think they're doing a great job. Now, um, during this omnibus uh, bill, if I can interrupt you there, Kel, for a moment, uh, during one of the elements in this uh, new omnibus bill that uh, the government is very keen to bring in is to give more powers to the DHHS. Is that a concern to you? Is that something that's thrown up a red flare? Well, I don't think that there's any argument that can be made that there should be an increase in powers. Um, I think the police have adequate power to do the job they're doing now under the current uh, provisions. I don't believe there's any case that can be made for extension of powers. Uh, there's, there's just in the circumstances where we have so few infections, there's just simply no need and we've got things like restriction, you can't move more than five kilometres from home. I think uh, the balance of scientific opinion now among epidemiologists is that that's totally worthless. And uh, people have been, I mean, if take, I, I can have my neighbours as uh, one of the preferred households to mingle with. We can go two doors from my house into a public park and sit down and, uh, and uh, have some time together. We can't do that in, in either of our backyards, and that's absurd. 
what do you say to all those people who say, look, uh, this omnibus bill that the government is trying to bring in, uh, those powers already exist in, in Queensland and New South Wales? I'm sorry, I, I missed the distance. I was just going to say, um, let me repeat that question again. Um, there are people who would say to you today, uh, why are you complaining about the arrival or the introduction of this omnibus bill? It's already been introduced in, in Queensland and also New South Wales. Surely this proposed bill would simply bring us into line with the other states. I think if we look at the track record of this current government in Victoria, one can be very concerned about them wielding any additional powers of any kind. We've seen a government that has been riddled with allegations of uh, ineptness and corruption. We had the red shirts wrought, we've had printing rorts, we've had brand stacking rorts, uh, you name it, we've had it from this government. Uh, they don't deserve to be given any additional powers and uh, in the hands of uh, people who aren't accountable. And this uh, virus is extremely dangerous. I was absolutely dismayed at the inquiry going into Victoria that it seems to uh, destroy the memory of people who've never even had it because we've had uh, no one saying they're responsible for the decisions that were made in relation to the combating the coronavirus. Uh, they've given evidence that no, no, the, the decision just morphed somewhere out of the air. And of course, when governments won't be accountable, then we should not allow them any additional powers. Strong words from Kill Glare. That's part one of our interview on The Informer. We'll be back with part two in just a moment. <laughs> 